program. Guys, let's start. Now, this next gentleman, our next guest on the program, uh, came to us via a producer of, of ours that was scrolling through the internet and uh, saw the video and forwarded it to us. And we made a decision that we would like to have the pastor on the program to talk to him a little bit, to kind of understand his, 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 his ideology a little bit, to try to understand the man himself. A lot of you guys have seen his video as well on Facebook because a lot of people told me, like, he cursed a lot. So obviously you guys watch his video. So I'm happy to introduce to you guys... Um, the, the, he's known as the Cousin Pastor. His name is uh, Pastor Matthews, and he's in Memphis, Tennessee. Pastor, welcome to the program. How are you? Welcome, my friend. Am I supposed to be seeing you? No, nah, I'm seeing you. So, so that's okay. that. That's the main thing. I'm seeing you. You're in HD. Okay. You're looking pretty nappy right now. Dashy. Uh, you're looking yeah. pretty good. Dashy. I guess that's the word. That's what the young people and them say. Okay. <laughs> I'm here. All right, uh, we're happy to have you here, uh, Pastor Matthews. Uh, and, uh, Just call me Thaddeus, man. That's Thaddeus? my name is Thaddeus. Thaddeus Matthews. So, you know, I, I'm not hung up on titles and things of that nature. So you can just call me Thaddeus. Thaddeus. Yeah. All right, Thaddeus. So Thaddeus, welcome mm -hmm. to the program. Welcome to Ride Along. And you, you're also doing a, a live on your end as well, correct? Yes, I am. All right, all right, all right. Good, good, good. So to your audience that's watching there as well, we like to say uh, welcome <coughs> to your audience. Hope they can hear me and hope they're seeing. But if they want to see the full video of myself and Thaddeus right here, they could go on to find the Ride Along page and they can see the full video right here. So Thaddeus, again, I want you to take the opportunity to welcome some of our, um, our, our uh, fans that's watching us around the Caribbean. Uh, some of them are fans of yours, and some of them are curious to find out what are you about. So take it t take the time to welcome them on the program. Well, first of all, let me thank you, uh, Junior, for allowing me to be on your program. I've been I'm now called the cussing pastor by millions around the world, um, and there are some things that we'll I guess we'll get into as far as that is concerned, but. Uh, I'd like to say I appreciate your allowing me to be present on your show and to your audience. I say good afternoon, good evening uh, to them. Right, absolutely. And and thank you so much, uh, Thaddeus. Right, so you are the self-proclaimed cousin pastor. I guess we'll start it off as what is a cousin pastor? So well, we can I mean, understand. What, 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 do you, what do you think a cussing pastor is? Well, well See, when, I thought, when I think about a pastor, I think about a, pa a pastor of being someone that is spiritual, uplifting, someone who would, 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 would give information and, 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 and spiritually engage all, all the, his congregation or persons, individuals, and stuff like that. Uh, but when I hear cursing in front of that, it kind of negates, to, uh, to a lot of people, it kind of negates the second part of it. So I want you well, to give me your definition. Well, first of all, let, let, let's, let's clear some things. Right. First of all, I am not cursing. And there's a difference in cursing and cussing. Right. That's the first thing that you and your audience need to grasp. But right. There is a difference in that. All those other things that you said that a pastor is supposed to do, right. I do those things. Now, I may not do them in your traditional way or the way that your traditional box tells you that it's supposed to be done right but when you say it negates it do, it may negate to you but it doesn't negate to me right see we, we we find ourselves when we talk about pastors and preachers well the first thing you need to understand that pastors when they are men are just like any other man right okay uh so we have we have set up this scope of what a pastor is supposed to be and damn most of the time y'all don't even know what what a pastor is supposed to do all right, so so give me your definition. Let's start it from there, then. I, 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 I've already I've already shared with you. Right. I do those things. I educate. I I inform. I uplift. I empower. Right. I I, I liberate the traditional mindset. I am spiritual, and because an individual may cuss does not mean that you damn the hell. As I've read many people around the world say it, you damn the hell because you cuss. I cuss. Now, it's a flaw. Now, what's your flaw? 
Maybe you sleeping with little boys. Maybe you sleeping with little girls. Maybe that's your flaw. Maybe you just a hoe. That's your particular flaw. Maybe you're a liar. Maybe you're a backslider. Maybe th that's your flaw. Maybe you're a heroin addict. That's your flaw. So all of us spiritually and scripturally, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But many people want to elevate uh, the so-called man of God or the woman of God to a status that is not real. Right. Um, in in tell us about your congregation and the people that follows you. Um, do you are you in a in a generic church? Or Am you, I in what? Are, are you in a are you in a church or, or, or do you are you do you pastor in a church or is it meeting your congregation online? <laughs> Apparently, you didn't do your research on me before you decided to interview me. No, nah, I, I I did the research. I just want everybody else to know it coming from you. I just want to, I just we, I'm, we, we just, I'm in a forty five thousand square foot building. Right. Since all of this is broken loose, I've taken in over 200 people online that want the truth. So I am in a physical building. Okay. And and how long have you, and again, uh, we, we, we're getting some background information. We have some time. So we're getting some background information to let the, the folks that are watching understand uh, Mr., uh, Mr. Pastor Matthews. Where is your church located? I'm in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, 3835 Raleigh Milliton Road in Memphis, Tennessee. Right. Okay. All right. So we got that there. Um, so the the we we also understand we are, you do a lot of outreach online. You do a lot of the 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 the, the social media. Uh, George. Yeah. Let me do this. Let me do this for you. Okay. Yeah. Let me give you my my background. Let me give you my history, cause. You, you ain't taking me where I need to go. No, nah, well, we, we have to start okay. here. Let, we let, have to start. Let, 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 me, let me share with you who I am so you and your audience will understand who I am. First of all, I'm a 60-year-old man. I know when you look at me, you can't tell I'm 60 years old. I've been in the ministry since I was about 16 years old. I left the church for about six or seven years because of the bullshit that goes on in the church, okay? The stuff that goes on, the, the we don't economically empower our people. The, the, the story of telling people that Jesus was a white man with them blonde, with blonde hair and blue eyes, that's the damnedest lie in the world. We don't even understand that the name Jesus is a transliteration of what they gave us because 2018 years ago, there was no letter J in the Greek or the Hebrew language. What I do, and, and, and let me share this with you. Yes. I'm also a professional uh, media person. Right. I've been in broadcasting 34 years. I've been in all facets of radio, and I've had my own independent television talk show for the last five years. I own my own television show I believe in telling the truth just the way it is bluntly okay I'm so blunt you can roll me up and smoke me what what I'm bringing about and this whole transition of the cussing thing I was sitting right here where I'm sitting right now in my office doing a two-hour Facebook feed on some community issues when I was attacked by a female on uh, Facebook you don't come at me unless you expect me to come back at you. Right. Did I cuss? Yes, I did. Praise the Lord. And someone took about three minutes of a two-hour show and took it all over the world. Now, am I grateful? Yes, I am. Because what they meant for good has turned out to be, I mean, for bad has worked out for my good. There are 10, 15 million people now that know who Thaddeus Matthews is, the Thaddeus Matthews television show, and also the Naked Truth Liberation and Empowerment Ministry. So when you see me cuss, you think that it's a flaw. But then I think if you're a hoe, it's a flaw. If you are a heroin addict, addict, it's a flaw. I'm just a natural man telling natural people the truth. That's who I am right. in a nutshell. And, okay, we get that now. So we understand who you are. Now, tell it. You mentioned yeah. it. Um, 
what are some of the misconceptions that you find in the generic church in, in churches mm -hmm. what are some of the misconceptions and things that people uh ex expect or think that they get in or they should get from the church that the church do not provide well one of the things that has happened and especially in the black church do you realize in the last 20 years we've taken up half a trillion dollars across this country in black churches and we are not as black churches economically empowering our people see we we want to tell folk by and by when the morning come when we get over there to heaven everything gonna be all right in heaven hell i ain't in no damn hurry to get to heaven george you you ready to go to heaven I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. To, I'm ready to go in the right place. I mean, I want you to explain it to me. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where, I, I, where, where is your right place, George? Well, I I believe in heaven, and I believe there okay. is a. I believe that there is a place. So you you in a hurry to get there? I'm I'm gonna get there whenever my my number okay. my, my time is called. Are you in a hurry to get there? I'm 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 not in a hurry. I just live okay. my life so on. If, a... if, if if you if you're not in a hurry to get there, the Bible says that God gave us dominion over everything on the earth did he not say that yes so then this misnomer that we're not supposed to have anything in life don't nobody's gonna have nothing but the damn pastor's supposed to have nothing nobody's gonna ride good and live good but the pastor that's a damn lie all of us should have the abundance of what god has given us the greatest cuss word i know in the world is broke okay under privilege not having motivation and desires to be the best that you can those are cuss words to me words 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 these words are just words okay just words and, and, and while i see folk getting upset because i cuss a little bit i, I see folk getting cussed but, but what, what is your bishop I say, a, a, li a little bit a, li a little bit what is he doing a, 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 li a little bit well, hell, I cuss whenever I get ready. I'm a grown ass man. I'm a grown ass man that's real, and I can go into the drug houses. I go into drug houses and pull females out of drug houses when pastors can't walk in there because the streets know me, the gangsters know me, the gang members know me. And when I woke up, and, and, and let me give you an incident. Recently, there was a woman that called me and told me that her daughter was in a crack house. And they were using her body so that she could pay off a debt. I went to the crack house. Your pastor, your bishop, your apostle, he can't do what I do. When I went to the crack house, what's I supposed to say, uh, Mr. Crack Man, uh, Mr. Dillard, uh, will, will you please let her go? No, I said, motherfucker, I, I'm coming up in there and I'm taking her out of there because that's somebody's sister, that's somebody's mother. I spoke on the language the language that the drug dealer could understand. See, y'all want to be politically correct, but you're not saving our society. And see, and I don't, I don't see, I don't see. First of all, I don't care what people think, whether I cuss or not, because you've got a misconception that cussing is going to send you to hell. See, just like you think that the preacher ain't sort of like no woman. Well, if your pastor, if your bishop, if your apostle. If he don't like a big booty girl, nine times out of ten, your pastor like a big booty boy. Let the church say amen. Go on, George. <laughs> your show. I, I watch it. I watch it. I watching the comments in the chat room as well. And and they, what they saying? They, I can't see them. Yeah, yeah. They, people are people are saying, how could you be a pastor and cursing and and pastor my ass? Someone said, pastor my ass. Well. Pastor they ass in. Wipe it too. What kind of reaction you get? What kind of reaction you get on your show? And when you go out there and you speak and Well, I, man, I've been on the air. I'm the most watched black man in this part of the country. Because not only do I deal with that, <coughs> the church, I deal with issues in the community. Uh, what what I deal with is realness, man, with blunt See, like when I go back and watch that video uh, of the young lady that was in the watch meeting service that was testifying, when I see all of these holier-than-thou folk 
here's a woman that walks in off the street. The first statement she makes is, I'm a backslider. Is it the church the place where the backslider should be able to go? Yeah, yes. I saw that then video she too. she says, I've, I've been prostituted. Yes. Get some holes in the church. Okay? It's some holes in the church. It's some holes on the motherboard. It's some holes uh, on the deaconess board. It's some holes in the church. That, that, that wasn't nothing new. There were prostitutes in the Bible. Then the woman says, well, uh, uh, I perform oral sex with my mouth. Okay. And I've been licking men's balls. Now, the guy that dropped the mic, he looked like a ball licker himself. But see, here we are. We wanted to condemn somebody that needed some help in the church, okay? She needed help, she needed comfort, but you wanna castigate her, you want to turn her down, you wanna look down your nose at her, you so damn heavily until you're no earthly good, okay? So so you, you get mad because you may hear a cuss word, but damn, what you doing to save somebody? We, we, in Memphis, Tennessee, we got over 4,000 black churches. We ain't talking about the white folk. Right. Over 4,000 black churches. And tonight, one of the things I'm going to be talking about on my TV show is that we, we've got Kroger stores. I don't know whether y'all got Kroger's in New York. It's, it's the largest chain of grocery stores in this area that are closing three stores in black communities. Now, while we're getting angry with them, with 4,000 thousand black churches why don't we have our own grocery stores in our community why are we begging white folk to do for us when we won't do for ourselves this is the type of message i got this is the type of truth i bring to our people quit waiting to go by and by when the morning come hell i want to walk asphalt streets i ain't in no hurry to walk no golden streets i gotta go by the field home first so i what what i'm telling people is this it's the truth. It's the truth. And y'all made me to cuss the pastor. Hell, I cuss. I, do I cuss across the poor bed? No. Do I say a little hell, a little damn? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I might that. But I don't call you no motherfucker on, on, on across the poor bed. So that has been a misnomer. But will I cuss? Yes. Your pastor cuss too. But he's a coward. He don't want you to think that he's real. So he, I, I cuss at the house. Will, will I drink? Yes. The Bible does not tell you not to drink. It tells you not to be given too much. Now, so, yeah. Do I look at a big booty girl? Yes, I look at a big booty girl. I'm a single man. I'll look at a big booty girl. But I'm also out here in these streets. I'm doing what needs to be done. When it's cold, it's 10 degrees in Memphis now. Y'all talking about snow up there. It's, it's 10. We ain't had it like this since 1920 in Memphis. I'm out in the community. I feed the hungry. I have job programs. I have all types of programs to empower this community. And most of all, I'm the only pastor in this city with a 45,000 square foot building that does not receive a, a salary. I don't have no annual days. I don't have none of that. The ministry is about enhancing, enriching, and empowering people all across this world. What do you say to... What do you say to... to um young people and old people as folks that are addicted to, to illegal substances how do you communicate how do you come across to them how do you talk to them that are adult, addicted to substance I, illegal illegal help. substance abuse i tell them to get get themselves some help brother i tell them go and get into a program that is going to give you some help let me let me give you something else brother that i think is very important in the church a lot of pastors are not trained to deal with psychological issues, depression, or any of those type of issues. Get yourself some professional help. Well, just wait on Jesus. He'll fix it out the while. Jesus has given the doctors the knowledge to be able to help you. So I tell people to go and get yourself some help. That's what I tell those who are addicted to substances. Yeah.
Folks, we're chatting here with the um, Pastor Matthews, and I'm going to get a chance to read the comments. The comments are coming in fast. I'm reading them now. I, oh, you I got, got them on my page. Okay, all right, all right. So you could just go ahead and pick one. And so I'm going to open up the phone line um, and take your comments as, uh, take your calls as well, because we want to get everybody. This is a, this is a communication. We're talking with him. We want to be, you to be a part of, of this. Um, do, does all the pastors or other pastors privately curse as you, or they just shy to come out and all, say, all the ones, all the ones I know, brother. Okay. See, we, especially in the black community, we have allowed ourselves to create an image of the preacher. The preacher is a man. The preacher has the same wants and desires, the same hurts, the same pains as anybody else, man. But what we have done, we have taken the preacher to sainthood, man. And, 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 and he tries to live in the shadow of what you want him to be instead of who he is. And what I share with people is that no matter who you are, God loves you. I, I share with people that all across this country that there is an X in front of everybody's name. See, we, we want to act holy and pious in the church. We, we want, see, you, you just quit smoking a box of pale males last night. You joined church one Sunday, and you, you hate the crackhead, okay? But, and, and hell, you was dumb enough to smoke cigarettes out of a pack that says that what you smoking is hazardous to your health. So you, one addiction ain't no greater than the other. So what, what I'm telling people to do is just be real yeah uh, that's true what's your thoughts on the the catholic church and the the deacons the the pastors in the I, catholic uh, i ain't i ain't catholic uh and i wouldn't be a part of no religion uh, or, or no group that says i can't have no woman that's the reason they mess with them little boys because hell they ain't got no woman get you a woman yeah someone so, someone said that they don't trust anyone that don't curse and and i don't either yeah <laughs> see we can act so holy man we 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 act so damn holy man all of us got some faults all of us got some issues in our life man all of us and and and, and sometimes the church is the most dangerous place for a lot of folks let me let me give you let me give you a prime example here's a woman that's getting her ass beat Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday by her husband. Sometimes he'll take, out on sun take off on Sundays. He's blacked your eye. He's broken your ribs. He's verbally abused you. You stay with him because you went to your pastor. And pastor said, uh, stay there for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you are, you are constantly taking the abuse because the church has told you, don't leave your husband. And see, I'm of the mindset, everybody you marry ain't your husband or your wife. See, what God has joined together, let no man pull asunder. But God ain't joined a whole lot of us. Oh, I, I felt the spirit then. God has not joined a whole lot of us that are in these marriages. God didn't have nothing to do with it. And we find ourselves praying to get out of something. God, we didn't ask God to put us in. But the church holds you in bondage brother and you stay in a bad situation you keep on getting your ass beat day after day month after month year after year because the church has programmed you irresponsibly stay there the lord will fix it after a while hell when they put that dirt on you yeah uh, um grand Braxo in the chat room here is saying that when a, when a man is in christ um all um uh uh, old, I know the scripture. Right. When you are a new creature, I right. am. Right. I'm a whole lot better than some things I used to do. And if that brother would honestly be true, damn, you you better understand that when you're in Christ does not make you a perfect. There is nobody that's perfect. When you're perfect, they putting that dirt on you. All of us sin and come short of the glory of God. But you want to give me that holy rolling bullshit about well, you, you know, you're a new creature. You ain't supposed to act like this. Well, what, what, what are you acting like? Are you going into the hedges and highways compelling men to come? 
See, you can't catch them. You can't clean a fish till you catch it. So you need to go where the hill, the holes are, the hole mongers are. You need to go where the, the sisters and the lesbians are and tell them about a man called God that can change anybody that he wants to change. So, I, you know, when you comment that with, with me, then fine. Okay, that's your thought, that's your belief. And let me share this with you. Yes. When I read much of what Paul said, Paul's writings were letters to the churches in Ephesus, Galatians, Corinth, Galatia, and those places. Much of what Paul says is Paul's opinion. Okay? Yes. And I don't agree with every opinion of Paul. Jesus said, or Yahshua, which is his real name, a new commandment I give unto you. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. You ain't loving your neighbor, but you're in church every Sunday. You're a woman, and, and, and you taking the pastor some chicken every uh, uh, every Sunday. Well, pastor, here's some chicken. Hell, you need to take some breasts and thighs home to your husband. That way you ain't got to be talking about he out there with that bitch. If you act like the bitch out of the street, then you can get your man to stay at home. Give him some, uh, some breasts, some thighs, and some legs, and some wings at the house instead of taking it somewhere else. Let the church say amen. Let's talk about se uh, sexual abuse. There, was a, there has been a lot in the news. Uh, a lot of politicians, folks in the private sector have been resigning, losing their job over sexual abuse. Um, if you were to, or if you had the opportunity, you probably you did, to counsel or talk to those men, what would your input to them be? My input wouldn't be anything because first of all, I don't know whether there has been uh, any type of abuse in the first place. See, some of these men are powerful men. And a woman will lie. Not to say that a man won't do something wrong, but, but you know, how do you prove it? Just because a woman said that he, he said something to me. Are we to accept that? So, I, you know, I, I don't really have no great big uh, issue on that. Look what they did to uh, to Bill Cosby. Okay? They castigated this man. You can't prove any of this. So I, I ain't got no big statement on that one way or the other. Is Do you think religion is religion is man-made? And if so, the 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 followers of people should not put all that trust and faith in one person. So the, in other words, you don't have to go to church to consider yourself to be religious. Well, you can... let, let, me, let me say this, and I'm looking at what Karen Williams is saying here. Religion is man-made. She's absolutely correct. Okay? Yeah. Jesus had no religion. Religion is man-made. If you're a Baptist, that's man-made. If you are, are, are Catholic, if you Presbyterian, you are Church of God in Christ, those are man-made theologi theological doctrines God is an awesome God and you cannot contain God and his awesomeness and Jesus in his awesomeness in 66 books in fact if you read the book of John the last chapter and the last verse it will tell you that of all the things that Jesus did was written in books there would not be enough books on the earth to contain them. See, we don't know everything that Jesus did. In fact, in your King James version of the Bible, what King James wanted you to have, there are 18 years that are missing out of the life of Christ. 18 years. So, we don't know what all Jesus did. Did Jesus ever have a girlfriend? I don't know. The, we, we said Jesus was both human and divine. How come Jesus couldn't have him no girlfriend? Somebody like, when you go back and you read the lost books of the Bible, you, you, you find that Jesus was performing miracles even as a small child. There is so much that we have missed out on because we don't read and we don't research for ourselves. Pastor, you're... you're, you're... 
yeah, yeah. I'm trying to. I'm trying to go to the. Also trying to look at the chat room. So if you can help me, there, look at the chat because there's so much comments that's coming in, and I really want to engage the audience there as well. Um, someone asked me. Someone texted me and asked me. Um, do you counsel kids? And if that, if you do counsel kids, and a child were to come up to you and and curse at you in your face, what would you tell that child? Would you tell him, well, yes, that is the way you should talk to a grown up, or would you talk to him? Ain't no, see, first of all, I'm a grown man. Ain't no child gonna walk up to me and talk to me disrespectfully. Okay. See, train your child. See, the training of your child respect comes at the house. Ain't no child gonna walk up to me and call me no motherfucker. But then ain't no grown man gonna walk up to me and say that. Okay. But so, but if, are you supposed to be an example to them if they look up to example? you? Example? Hell! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Ex see, here's what I'm. Damn! Example? And, and, and they listen to like a role model, like a role model, like every like a role model. In the world, they know word for word and don't know the ABCs, but they can. Give you every rap song. So what if you whatever you hear me say, you never is not something that you have not heard. And then again on Sunday morning here at the Naked Truth Liberation and Empowerment Ministries, I'm not cussing across the pulpit. Yeah, I may say hell. Yeah, I may say damn. And I may say some things that your preacher may not say. I don't dress it up on a Sunday morning. She was a woman of whoredom. No, she was a hoe. And if the whole had to stay at home with her husband, then he wouldn't be with the side chick. Do and I'll tell you on something. Do those things that make your husband happy, baby. Ain't nothing in the marriage bed that is a foul. If if he wants you to ride it like a pony, ride it, baby. If he wants you to suck it like it's a popsicle, suck it. Because that's your husband, and you should be doing what it takes to make your husband a happy man. And he should be doing what it takes to make you a happy woman. Can somebody in your audience say amen on this afternoon in New York City? <laughs> Folks, we're chatting here with, 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 uh, with, with Pastor Matthew. I just feel like I should include that pastor there. When I said, when I said earlier that they, 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 should, they, they look up to you, when folks think like teachers, pastors, parents, they see that as an authoritative figure, right? Uh, my pastor, I think that I would, I could sit with my pastor and he would inspire me and, and I would look up to him and he would do things that I would uh, try to emulate, right? Um, but if, I, if I'm watching this, like I go to your church and I'm watching this live or watching your live and then I'm seeing that you cursing and that is how you behave, I would think that that's acceptable behavior. So I would walk out there and cuss the same word. I don't get what you think. Okay? See, that's your thought. It, 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 see, I'm real. And see, people want realness, man. See, what, what what denomination are you? I, I'm, I, I'm a church of God. Okay, so, so what y'all believe in the church of God? See, all of them should be churches of God. Right. See, why is it that we got all these denominations and we ain't got but one God? Well, again, that, that's as, as a child growing up. Um, that's the church that my parents took me to. That's I went to church there on uh, Sundays, and so you stuck. So you telling me you stuck in your mama's damn box? Whatever their religion is, you ain't thought outside of the box, brother. Well, I I, okay. I never thought I never thought about being a Muslim. I, I never thought well, about. I, I, wait a minute, wait a minute. I ain't, look. I ain't got nothing against the Muslims. Let me tell you something. The only black leader that I respect in this country is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. That's the only black leader in this country that I respect. I understand the nation. I understand what the nation does. Okay? So you ain't never thought about being a Muslim, but the only group that I see that has educated black folk about their blackness and their culture is the nation. Right, so are you, 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 thing but creating an atmosphere in your mind to die and we'll see you in the better place. Hell, I don't know if there's no damn better place. Ain't nobody came back and told me a damn thing. What's that man named that died, that made the computer and the Google thing, Jobs or whatever his name? He dead. Looked like I would have got a text message or email or something that told me it's a better place. We want people to live in the by and by and not in the now and now. Mm. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, let, let, let's take another question from the chat room there, guys. We're chatting here with uh, Pastor Matthews. Um, oh, you, you said, let me, I have, I have one, one question for you before we look into the chat room. You said that the only uh, leader, uh, black religious leader that you respect is Honorable um, Louis Farrakhan. Are you a part of, of, of his, of, of the denomination? Sir, I don't, I don't have a damn denomination. And because I respect the minister, does not mean that I am of the nation of Islam as a member. I respect the minister. I have flown across this country to be in the minister's presence to hear what he's going to say that is going to stimulate the black community. So I ain't got, I'm not anti-Muslim. I'm not anti my brothers that standing on the corner with the papers and with the and, and all the information because see the average black man doesn't understand that those are entrepreneur Negroes. I ain't gonna even say entrepreneurs. Entrepreneur Negroes, those men go and get the papers at one price from the nation. They get on the street and they sell those papers. They feed their families in a nation where we have black leadership that will not provide jobs, especially for the ex-felons. So yes, I totally respect the minister, because what is your church of God doing? What's your pastor doing? It, 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 Brother brother George, ha, how many of the hungry folk have y'all fed this week? Well, it's your church. Now, listen what I what I personally have been doing for, for a while. Um, I, ain't talking about you. I ain't talking about you personally. Your church. I'm not an you active. No, no, I, no, I'm not an active. I, I, I'm not an active. I don't go to church every Sunday. I no, leave. No, 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 no. But you brought your pastor your church and yeah looking up to the preacher right what has your pastor brother the church you may not be there every sunday but you you know some people at the church yeah what have the members of your church it, it it's no one you said that in new york how many folk have your church taken in out of the cold right and, and that is important let me tell you what the church does um i've 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 noticed that the church give a lot of homeless people food uh, or, or canned goods uh, a lot of no run church members no. and non-church members that come and need assistance get assistance from the church and from its what? members uh, is, is this your church Did you remember? It's, it's not my church as I said I'm not an active I don't go to church every Sunday uh, all right but so here's, what, what here's, is it that, yeah. so what is it that you believe then uh, brother Joe I believe that you do good in life and 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 in a, in a in a large part, I believe that what we do in here is a ministry. I believe this ride along is not only a program that okay. reaches and and talk to people around the world, but I think it's a ministry. We help people, and even if it's by myself or my team, we are a ministry and we helping people. So I'm not a follower of any particular person. I just believe let, let me do good. Else. Yeah. Do, do you do you curse at all? Yeah, hell yeah, I curse. Okay. You think you're going to hell because you cuss? No, I, I don't think. I, I don't. Are, 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 are you damned to hell because you cuss? No, but but I no, I don't think I'm damned to hell. No, I'm no, I don't think I don't think that I'm damned to hell. There is no separate set of rules, my brother. Right. Ain't no rule for you and a rule for me. If you say, if I say motherfucker and you say motherfucker, we don't just been two motherfuckers that said motherfucker. <laughs> You ain't damn the hell, and I ain't either. Yeah, but I, it, it, it's it's just like a parent, right? A mother or a father that is bringing up two kids, and mm -hmm. they're smoking cigarettes, mm -hmm. and or they're smoking weed, or they're sniffing cocaine or whatever, and they're telling their kids, "Hey, don't do cocaine, or don't do weed, or don't smoke cigarettes." So. As a parent, I know to be an example to my kids, right? And the things that I wouldn't do, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't tell, I wouldn't put it on them. I ain't tell you, I'm not gonna tell you not to cuss. But no, as I, as I told you earlier, like I'm not, if I'm you, not, I'm not gonna tell you not to cuss. Get your look. The doctors will say you feel good when you cuss. Get your good cuss out. Get get your one of them real good cussings out. I'm not gonna curse on the show, Pastor. I'm not saying cuss on the show. Okay, I'm not saying that's it's your show. You, you, I mean, you do it the way you want. But I'm saying to you, see, the hang up is on the cuss. And y'all cursing everybody every day. See, when you tell somebody, go to hell, that's a curse. 
when you tell your child you ain't going to never be no, nobody. You just like your no good ass daddy. That's cursing him. You have played a curse on his life. So don't get the two words mixed up, cussing and cursing. And, 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 and don't, when you look at me, get the message, brother. Get the message. My mama was a great cusser. I hear my dad. I never met him. But I heard, I didn't know nothing about until he died, that he was a great cusser. I got some cussing in my DNA. We all got a little something in us, okay? We all sin and come short of the glory of God. But what this episode has allowed to happen is that now people get a chance other than in the Memphis and the Southern region get to know who Thaddeus Matthews is. They get to hear truth that you're not going to get to hear in your church. And if your audience turn me on in about one hour, which is going to be 7 o'clock Memphis time, you go to uh, my, because I'm in Facebook jail, y'all. They keep me in Facebook jail because they can't stand truth. Yeah. Go to my and subscribe on the Thaddeus Matthews TV channel on uh, YouTube. YouTube, Thaddeus Matthews channel. Get the one with me in the nice little suit because I got some others out there from years ago I, I don't know how to get rid of. But I'm sitting there at my desk with my little PM, my little pastor thing up there and I'm in a suit and a little plaid jacket. Go there at 7 o'clock because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about uh, what's going on in the black community. We talk about black power, but we have no power in the black community. That's what I'm going to be talking about on this evening. Praise the Lord. Yes. I right, guys, uh, we have another question coming in from Lydia James. She said, did you open up your church, uh, church to, the, to the homeless in frigid weather? Did you do it as a pastor? In, in Memphis, Tennessee, you have to have a permit to do that. And no, I didn't. But what I did, I went and got a couple of hundred blankets and took it out there to the cold, to them. Right. Okay. Some I do all year long is taking care of the needy and feeding the needy. We, did I open up the gym? I couldn't. By law, I could not. Right. But you, you actively participate in helping people. Like, that's what I'm saying. Even if you're a pastor or not a pastor, even if you are a regular person like myself we do a lot of outreach we have a lot of support we support a lot of people help a lot of people that comes on the program we are a ministry and 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 whether you're a pastor or not you could make a difference so i'm not but, but you know i offer jobs anybody that want a job i have the influence and the means to get them a job i got a program i'm going to start i had some people approach me we're going to put people as many people that want to be in truck driving learn how to drive big rigs. We'll, I've got a program that I'm starting that is going to train them to drive big rigs absolutely free. No cost whatsoever. The mission of the Naked Truth Liberation and Empowerment Ministry and y'all go to my uh, to the church website. If you want to see uh, the physical bu building, you want to see if I'm in a physical building, go to Naked Truth L-E-M dot com www.nakedtruthlem.com You can see the physical biz, bu building. I don't get a salary, brother. I put about $6,000 or more of my personal money into this ministry every month. Every month. My money comes from my business interests. Okay? Are you a pastor that has a Mercedes Benz? Yes, I do. Nice, pretty one, too. But I had it before the church. The church is 20 months old. My business supplies what I need through God. God supplies all of my needs, brother. And see, people will say, uh, how are you the pastor? Well, uh, 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 I, I, you wouldn't be my pastor. I ain't trying to be yours, then, baby. But the Bible says, I, and, and that, that was God talking. I choose pastors after my own heart. God is tired of the madness that is going on in America with these weak, jelly back, politically correct, wanna be nice preachers when our people are dying in the street. So God has called a man that is bold like me, that will step out in the midst of a storm and tell my people, peace be still. We must wake up as a people. We must economically, 
empower ourselves? Shouldn't the only person at the church with some money be the preacher? You ought to have some. I'm driving a nice car and you catching a bus. You missing the whole ministry. There's something about what I'm saying that you're not grasping or either I'm not teaching you the right thing, brother. Yeah, that's true. Um, we, we're cutting it short on time here. Let's talk about quickly about community upliftment. And Doing what now? Com we're going to talk quickly about community upliftment and people that are out there in the community. Let's inspire some people. Let's inspire some new black leaders. What are the, do you think that that's a void in our community, that we really don't have that upliftment for our people, someone that people could run to? Like, I remember, um, as you said, Farrakhan, there was, um, what's the other one? Shop, Shopton. Oh, we always used to see Shopton. We don't see uh, Shopton. Uh, He's Shopton. up in your area. Right, right. But community leadership, we don't have that. Let's speak on that briefly and what could be done to cultivate some new leaders that people could start looking up to. What's your thoughts on that? Some of these Negroes got to die. See, let me tell you the reason that you don't have strong black leadership in this country. You still want to say, we shall overcome and we go into the mountaintop. Damn, when you going to overcome? Okay? What we've got to do is create an atmosphere of training our young people on how to be leaders. We get black leaders that want to stay in office 99 years, they want their funeral out of, out of political office. We've got to start the training. We've got to start educating our children on, first of all, what their history is. After you learn your history, what can I do to make my community a better place? Then here's the thing that blacks don't do. We go for the rhetoric. We go for the okie doke. We allow our politicians to tell us it's going to get better after a while vote for me and I'll set you free. And all, they are a part of the white man's political scheme. They buy, they still buy niggas. At least they do in Memphis, Tennessee. I don't know what, what y'all do up there in New York, but they'll <laughs> buy a nigga here. These Judases that we have, they go for less than 30 pieces of civil. What we've got to do is find people that really have the interests of our people all around our country. Black folk, we shouldn't be begging white folk for nothing. We should be able to empower ourselves. Let me, let me share something. All, all races of the country, other races, come into our communities and they get rich. Yeah, well, all that weave and stuff in your head, the Vietnamese and them Korean people, they come in here, they get rich off of us. We won't do business with ourselves. And that's what I'm going to be talking about on my show tonight. We've got to take our young people and start to making them entrepreneurs. We want to tell our children, and this is the worst statement, go to school, get a good education, and get a job. I'm with you there. I'm with you there, 100%. How come, how come we can't create jobs? Create jobs. How come create we jobs. can't create preach industry? It. Preach man? it, pastor. Preach it. That's what I preach, brother. Preach it, pastor. See, you talking about a cuss word. Broke is a bad word. That's a cuss word. That's profanity to me. But we don't mold our children, man. Every, you look at the Japanese, you look at the Chinese, they started educating their children from the womb, brother. Okay? And then, and let me give you something else, man. We got to take our black children off of that similar, that infamil. Okay? The identification of our people is taking place, man. You take that infamil, you take that, uh, uh, that other stuff I just said, and you read it. There are chemicals that are poisonous in that. Our children's minds are being destroyed because the black mother wanted to be like the white woman. You wanted to copy off of her. So you laid back and you want instantaneous everything. So you don't put the baby on the titty no more. See, God made the titty. I, I wish I could get some help up in here. God made the preach titty it, preach for it. the nutrient to be in the titty that would go inside of that child. But you giving them chemicals that the white folk making you and your child, your children are being dumbed down. You, you, you're programming them to be killers, rapists, because you're giving them a chemical compound, brother. We've got to preach truth 
and realness in this country. Yeah, and 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 you know I I have to second that on the the fact of go to school, get an education, find a job. I think, and I've been saying that for years on the, for as long as I know myself, whether on this program or anywhere else, we need to retrain our kids. It's we need to create employment for ourselves and others and. That's one of the realest things you said for the whole night, Pastor. Besides everything else, that's that's real. That's real to me. That's real to me right there. Pastor, thank you so much. It's been real chatting with you. Although well, let, 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 let me say something to one of your 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 lead one of your little people here. Dewan Henderson. Y'all remember Jim Jones? What he said. Uh excellent speaker. This guy speaks good and have great ideas, but a manner is not his title. Well, damn what you think brother I don't give a damn about what you think what I'm telling you is truth how to uplift yourself you want me to sound like your bishop your pastor your non-functioning preacher well damn brother I ain't him I'm a man after God's own heart I'm a man that says just like God says know the truth and the truth shall make me free to your audience join me in one hour you can go to the church website at nakedtruthlem.com and get me or subscribe to the Thaddeus Matthews YouTube channel where I'm sitting up there with the nice pretty suit on. My brother, it has been my pleasure being on your show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, and, man. Uh, maybe we'll do it again. Maybe we'll Bye. do it again. Maybe we'll do it again. Thank you so much, Thaddeus. And uh, it, it was my pleasure. Bye. All right, cool. Yeah, guys, that was the cursing pastor, Thaddeus Matthews. Yeah. Let me know what you guys think. Let's chime in on the Ride Along support group. Let's talk about it. Is he a bigger sinner for cursing and using those languages? They say, you know, all sin, they, 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 all sin is a sin. It's a sin. I'm just concerned of his following. I'm just concerned that people would walk up to him and curse him the same words that he cursed at them. And as a pastor, I'm just saying that probably, you know, as a as a as a uh, inspirational figure, I'm just saying. Anyway, guys, it's your opinion. Whether you like it or not, you get a share and chime in. Go on there on the Right Along Support Group. And I'm going to be on Instagram right after this program so you guys could chat with me and tell me what you think about the program, what you think about the pastor, what's your take on it. I want to know. So join me on Instagram, right along on Instagram, and let's chat privately on this program here tonight. On behalf of all our production team right here, we're going to continue the conversation. Jay Douglas, everybody, everybody, everybody. Everybody, thank you so much for watching join me on Instagram in five minutes and let's chat right along dot com um, in face Instagram right along live or like the page over there and let's chat and thanks to all of our sponsors for making it all possible as well this has been another program join us again tomorrow for more right here on right along peace out everybody I want to spend more time with my family and those who depend on me. 
I want to earn a little extra income now that I'm retired. I want to work part-time while I put myself through school. I want the freedom to follow my passion and still earn a good living. With Uber, it's all possible. Uber is a smartphone-based app that connects drivers with riders at the push of a button. Uber is available 24-7. It fits around my existing schedule so I can work whenever and wherever I want. Accept the fare and a pickup is just moments away. Riders are charged automatically through the app and at the end of each week, I receive a direct deposit into my account. Safe and easy. Around the globe, Uber is empowering people to be their own boss. You can run your business the way you want. Without having to give up on what matters most. I, I want to be, be an Uber, Uber partner. partner.